God Tier is a skirmish-based miniature game where you have champions literally fighting over the tiers of the gods that have fallen from the sky and crystallized into these magical effects, jacking you up, giving you superpowers. You build your warband, you pick your factions, and you fight it out. So within that, as a skirmish war-based game, there's dice mechanics. You've got your champion. They have followers. You play the mission. The newest champion, Fenra. She is an amazing example of dice pool mechanics in action. So every couple of months, there's a new warband, new faction that is released, and you get to try it out, and you get to run different combos and explore different missions. And like any new warband, ship, armada, army, whatever it's going to be for the system, there's a little bit of an unlock period. A new champion gets released. The god tier community checks out the stats, figures out how to play it, looks at some different synergies, and you have to get a couple of games in. So my first thought on Fenra was she's going to be an extremely challenging warband slash champion to play against because her initial evade is so high and her life is, is pretty solid also to pin her down and the volume of attacks that are going to be needed to defeat her, I don't know if I'm going to have enough attacks to deal with the other warbands. And God tier, you can play from one to three warbands on each side. This is something very, very, very interesting, especially combined with the speed that she moves. And past couple of games this weekend, just average dice rolls playing against her. Not like I was rolling legendary or not like I was rolling not very well. Confirmed everything that I thought. Now, quickly becoming one of my favorite champions. But this is also, I say that for the framework, this is also an excellent example of dice pools in action. And being able to calculate based on the volume of dice that you can generate are you realistically going to be able to do something? And I covered this in the Wargaming Tactics 101 playlist. Push that up to the channel here. But this is a great example of taking that theory hammer and putting it into practice. So let's dive in with a real life example here, looking at Fenra. And if you're playing God tier, agree, disagree, but also using this as a template, using this as a way to understand your own Wargaming system Understand and look for these opportunities. Know what you're going up against. So in God tier, the champions have three primary stats. Evade is the score that your opponent has to equal or beat in order to land a hit. Armor is when they roll a damage roll, when your opponent rolls a damage roll, that's what you subtract. So if you hit me with three wounds, I have one armor. I take two wounds. And then, of course, five my life points, my hit points, the ability to stay up. When that reaches zero, I get knocked out and have to revive myself. So this idea in a wargaming system, when I make an attack, a shooting attack, a close combat attack, a magic attack, psionic attack, whatever it's going to be, I have a number of dice that I roll to see if I can cause an effect. If my shots land, if my axe hits, if my magic missiles go off. And of course, the number of dice that I roll depends on a variety of things. Simulating the fog of war, simulating combat. If I'm um, low level, low quality troops, I'll roll a minimal amount of dice. If I'm high quality or it represents a different weapon, I'll roll a high variety of dice. Another example, chain of command, World War II. If I shoot a rifle, I roll one die to see if I'm going to hit. Usually I need threes or fours, depending on the soldier, but I roll one die. If I shoot a machine gun, MG42, I roll eight dice to hit. So the more dice that you roll, the more of the chance to hit. Now, as soon as you roll those dice, whatever you need to hit, whether it's a certain number on a D6 or it's a symbolic pass-fail, success-failure type system, God tier is a is a D6-based system, but the dice are custom in that they are fail, score one, or score two. So essentially miss, score one hit, score two hits. But you collect this pool of dice, 
you roll them. Now, a certain number are going to hit or qualify, and a certain number aren't. Then what often happens is you will take the dice that do hit, just to keep it easy. If I roll 10 dice to hit you, how many are you going to hit? Let's say five or six. So that dice pool starts at 10, gets down to five or six. Now I have to beat armor, or I have to roll for effects, or see if I can break through. If I have five dice or six dice, am I going to roll six out of six? Probably not. So I'm going to roll those dice. Maybe I score two or three hits, and then finally it comes off of wounds. So what we see is in order to to destroy a model or to destroy a unit, often what will happen is I'll have to make two or three rolls. Or the pool of dice, even if it switches to my opponent back and forth, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Let's say I fire 10 shots at you. I roll to hit, and five of them hit. So I went from a dice pool of 10 to 5. Now you get to make a cover save. You're hiding out behind that wall. So you take the five dice that were my hits, you roll them, and now let's say cover is a 4 or higher. Two hit to beat that. You take two wounds, you lose two models. So this idea of in what part of the phase do you want to have the best stats? Looking at God tier, we've got three stats that I have to beat to cause damage or to remove a model. First, I have to hit you. So first, I have to beat the evade. Then I've got to bypass armor, either completely or or at least whatever that armor number is, score one or two higher. And then I've got to go against the life. And for the champions, champions have um, multiple life values, five or six or higher, while followers just have one life value. But they're followers. We're focusing on the champion. So... Fenra here with the five evade means I have the highest defense when your dice pool is at its highest. So right off the bat, I'm knocking off the most amount of dice that you can possibly roll. That's that that first line of defense. Now, God tier is kind of um, polarizing her in that one armor, one armor is, is the lowest in the game for champions. Currently, there's no one with zero armor. Most armor might be four, probably clocking in around four. There's a few with three, but they're more support. They balance it with other powers. Um, And some, like the different dwarf clans, they'll have five armor. But naturally, having five armor, their speed is very, very slow. Um, God tier, you move in two different phases. The dwarves in the phase will move one space and then use an action to move a second space, and they move one in the other phase. So they're very, very slow. So you say, yeah, I'm jacked up five armor. Plus you have buffs. So I can buff that up to a six armor, but I'm extremely slow. Fenra having the five evade means I am combating you at your highest dice pool. I am cutting that down in the beginning. So you, if you roll legendary, I'm still cutting that in half. I'm still reducing that tremendously. Um, as for the number of attacks to generate hits, that There's a variety to that. You know, it's anywhere from four, five, or six dice, or maybe a little bit higher. But looking at that, having that huge five evade means before we even deal with armor, granted it's only armor one, and before we even deal with life, it's five life, I've got to hit you. I've just got to hit you in the first place. And then with the hits, then we're going to roll against the armor. What gets interesting is another layer here, Um, And the number of attacks work a little bit differently because in God tier, they're separate than the hits. I'll have a variable to hit, and then um, it's not the the hits that I roll for the armor. It's um, a separate pool that's defined, which is why just not getting tagged in the first place is so, so important. What's layered over also is with God tier, you can play one warband. A warband is a champion and a number of followers, and they follow different themes. The miniatures look absolutely fantastic. You can play with two warbands. You can play with three warbands. The rules work the same either way, allowing you, hey, we only have an hour to play, so let's just, or actually, like, we've got, like, 35 minutes to play. Let's do one warband. If we have an hour and a half, let's play two warbands. If we have maybe, like, two hours to play, let's play three warbands. Technically, you could run four war bands if you wanted to. But this idea of in God tier, you can also have synergies between other war bands that will um, jack your stats up 
where these different stats of movement, of evade, of armor, I can use abilities that give bonuses to my friendly warbands working with me or penalties to my opponent's warbands. So with Fenra, if I have a support warband, kind of like a caster type warband, a buff debuff, I can jack that evade up to six. I can jack that armor up to two. Just hitting her. Wow. So now you get into this interesting thing where uh, I found playing against her because I wanted to play against her. I mean, I've got the miniature in my collection. I'm going to play it. She's going to be a um, part of my beast pack warband. But I want to get that unlock and, and I want to face and roll the dice against her. What was interesting is kind of this, this, I feel like no choice, bad choice type scenario where I've got three warbands playing the max, yeah, I I could tag Fenra. I could absolutely beat those numbers, but I'm going to have to throw all of my buffs and multiple, multiple, uh, all three warbands trying to attack her. Well, three on one, I I don't like those odds. Yeah, I'll kill her, but it took all three warbands to bring her down. We're not talking one-to-one or I send um, um, my slayers, which are the, the red colored, which primarily focus on combat. So I send the slayer in. And my second warband is going to buff up the Slayer and I tag her. I don't even necessarily like that because I'm consuming two warbands. So sometimes what you see with some of these units in different war games is the, the dice pool that's required to beat them is sometimes so high. You will invest so much in trying to do that. Okay, I did it. But at what cost to the rest of my army, armada, warband, and to the mission? And on top of that, Fenra's attacks are... Pretty potent, pretty powerful. So what does that mean? She's running around. If I'm not dealing with her, she's going to be chewing up my entire warband and and seeing how that works. So I feel like I'm like, hmm, this is kind of an interesting no-win scenario. Now, where it works out, of course, is not only different warbands and different counters that might also have the same thing, but the missions in God tier are... um, very different and very well developed. And and certainly you can pick a mission. We can say ahead of time, hey, let's pick um, life or let's pick destruction. But I want to say for the most part, I can say the most part because I don't know every God tier community. The way that most people play is you draft your warband, then you roll randomly for the mission. So there's a couple of missions. The balance is there's a couple of missions that she really doesn't play that well in where it's, um, it's actually kind of in hindrance because you might be camped in one area trying to gather a pile of tears, she's not going to be running around. And so I'm not going to waste attacks on her, but I'll surround her, but I'll tar pit her, and I'll try and nullify that way. But in other missions, wow, what an exciting dynamic miniature. This idea, wargaming tactics, there are certain universal concepts. If I'm rolling dice or I'm flipping cards or I'm rolling dice and flipping cards, as in God tier, and we're fighting over a board that has measurable distances with mission objectives, there are certain universal laws that are going to be happening. If I can understand them on this this top level, then bring bring the meta down to the actual game itself. How can I use that to beat my opponent, or if I'm facing that, to deal with my opponent? And Fenro is a great, just-dropped, new example, new warband, of trying to sort that out and trying to figure it out. 